Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play the Dagger of Amun-Ra. Last time we talked and eavesdropped some more, and today we're going to talk and eavesdrop even more than that. Um, we have this lady to talk to, Dr. Olympia Miklos, so let's see what she has to say. Mr. Agostini? I have only met him once or twice at social affairs. He seems to be very competent, that one. Alright. Well, someone has a good opinion of him. Dr. Carter is an odd one, if you ask me. He is so very interested in gaining personal glory. He doesn't seem to fully understand the beauty of what he has discovered. Why, the Amin Ra artifacts are a symphony, a tribute to the wonders of death. Ah. See, that's why I like her. She's just, she's pretty cool. Dr. Carrington is a quiet one. I don't see him very often. I'm certain, however, that he must have a poetic soul. What makes you say that, Dr. Miklos? I have seen him walking amongst the dead in the Egyptian exhibit late at night. I cannot blame him. It's better than moonlight on headstones. Ah. So you've seen him walking in the Egyptian exhibit. Interesting. And yes, he is a quiet one because he didn't say much to us now, did he? Ah, yes. Detective O'Reilly. I can't say that I'm overly fond of that one. He has little respect for the wonderful things in the museum, and he is too firmly rooted in this life. I do not believe that he likes the dead at all. Can you imagine? <laughs> and you can see that her obsession is with the dead and dead things. But hey, there's worse things out there. I am sorry, but I don't know what a crowd follower is. Ah, is it some sort of pastry? Oh yes, he runs the laundry down the way. He always manages to keep the pleating in my silk shrouds just right. Your silk shrouds? Why do you keep silk shrouds? Oh, never mind, it's just a dead people thing. An odd little fellow, that one. He reminds me of one of the specimens in my dried rat collection. <laughs> oh, that's probably pretty close to the mark. Me? How sweet of you to ask about me, my dear. Well, I consider myself a simple woman. Just an echoing museum, a few hundred dead things, and a ferret for company. And I could be happy for the rest of my life. Well, with a little male companionship from time to time, that is. <laughs> oh my. I find Yvette to be a charming young lady. Some people around here don't appreciate her zest for life, but I find her quite refreshing. Well, Yvette isn't a bad person, per se. She's pretty nice. She's just kind of slow. At least from what I've seen so far. Ah, Wolf. He has some lovely scars, doesn't he? Just between us girls, I think he's dreamy. <laughs> oh my. That is uh, something to keep in mind right there. the young stevedore, Steve Dorian. He is a charming young fellow. I imagine he has some wonderful scars from working on the docks. Hmm. And she's also very into scars. Hey, teach their own. I don't know if I trust that one. She screamed when she saw my beautiful dried rat exhibit and cried out like a baby when my ferret Daisy bit her ankle. Foolish woman. Ah, uh, that's no good. I wouldn't cry out. Mr. 
Mr. Najir is a very quiet one, isn't he? And so polite. Sometimes I wonder about him, though. I see a certain light in his eyes, like daisies, when she's about to kill a spider. I think I like Mr. Najir. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I wonder what it is you really see. Ah, yes. Mr. Smith is a well-respected Egyptologist. He truly loves the desiccated bodies of his ancestors, you know. I think he is a good man. Do you think it's possible that he stole the dagger? Possible? Most definitely. Probable? Most unlikely. If he had stolen the dagger, he would be on the first ship back to Egypt. Then again, perhaps he's too clever for that. Or he's lingering behind to wreak his bloody revenge. <laughs> Some interesting theories there. The Tribune is an excellent paper. You are most fortunate to be employed there, Miss Bo. Oh! Why, thank you, Dr. Miklaus. Stick with the Tribune, my dear, and you will almost certainly go far. Their article on dysentery in the Herdanos of Spain was simply marvelous. See, that's why I like her. Even though she's into dead people and scars, she's a very positive, happy person. I mean, if it makes her happy, then who's to tell her different? I love to walk along the docks on a moonlit night and feed carrion to the rats. Such friendly little fellows. That's cute. The Lion Decker is my home now. I never want to leave it. Its musty hallways and creeping shadows are in my very blood. Can you imagine spending an entire lifetime drifting through the land of the dead? That opportunity is mine, and I treasure it. Oh, good for you. Yes, I am aware that many people enjoy going to such places. I personally do not. I find them too noisy and the people are too lively. I would like to get a good close look at some of those hideous livers, however. That bootleg alcohol is quite strong. Bye. So, Dr. Miklos, has this been a good year for you? I would say, yes, very good. I came here from Greece just a short time ago, and look at me now, curator of the largest private museum in New York. I'm happy to hear that, Dr. Miklos. That's awesome. Tell me, have you noticed anything unusual at the museum lately? The whole museum is unusual, my dear. We are surrounded by dead things. Just walk around for a while and breathe in its wonderful atmosphere. Why, the whole place smells of death. Hmm. Uh, I just might do that. Have you ever noticed oh, we will any eventually. dead things that, well, don't belong? My dear, every dead thing belongs. Dead things are our friends. <laughs> Maybe she's a little too obsessed with death, I'll have to admit. Dr. Miklos, do you have any idea who would want to steal the dagger of Amon Ra? Ha! <laughs> Very funny. Everybody, silly girl. It's a priceless artifact. Not only that, but it is said that the blade is an unknown alloy that can slice through bone like butter. Oh, wow. Mm. Um, I suppose that was a silly question after all. Let me rephrase that. Do you know of anyone with any particular motive? Well, Todd Smith and Ramesses Najir both wanted it very badly to return it to their homeland. But they are both so upset, it hardly seems possible that they could have done it. 
Then again, perhaps they are just fine actors. <laughs> I love how insightful she is, too. You are an expert in Egyptology, aren't you, Dr. Miklos? Well, yes, I suppose I am. I have been fascinated with the ancient Egyptians since I was a tiny girl. They loved death, like you Americans love baseball. Alright, and we've spoken with her, and since we uh, recently got Tut Smith as one of our question things, let's uh, ask Dr. Carter about that. What he thinks of Dr. Tut Smith. You aren't friends with that swine, are you? Well, no, I'm not, actually. Good. You'd do well to stay clear of that Egyptian pig. That bloated maggot ought to be horsewhipped and sent back to the dung-laden wasteland he came from. I get the impression you don't like him very much. Quite the detective, You could Laura. say that, yes. Why not? I'd rather not say. Do you always pry into people's personal affairs like this? Yes, actually. It's my job. You're a professional busybody? <laughs> I'm a reporter. Same thing. Oh, well, okay, so let's listen to what they have to say. Or, okay, we can't listen to them, they're not saying anything important. But we could probably listen to on them, but uh, let's uh, ask them about Ted Smith as well before we do so. Mr. Smith is a very intelligent fellow. We have become friends of late. I always enjoy the company of one of my countrymen. Alright. How about you, Countess? Anything interesting to say about him? My, my, what an intense gentleman he is. Why, he's practically obsessed with the dagger. Alright, well, we know, knew that, so that wasn't much interesting. Let's see if we can listen in on them. If you want to know my theory about it, I think it was stolen by an Egyptian. No offense to your people, Mr. Najir, but I think there is a secret sect of Egyptian sun worshippers who have sent an envoy here to steal the dagger. That's ridiculous. Countess, I hardly think that's likely. Secret sects like you're describing haven't existed in hundreds of years. Very true. Oh, really? And what makes you such an authority on secret sects, Mr. Najir? Well, I am only expressing my opinion, madam. I'm certainly not an expert on a subject. Quite so. I think my theory is as good as anyone's, darling. And I heard it from a reliable source. Oh? Who was that? Never mind. Let's just say my source has never been wrong before. Hmm. There's always a first time for everything, Countess. I still find your theory far-fetched. Since you seem to be listening, Miss Bo, <laughs> what do you think of my theory? That's how conspicuous what? you are, Laura. Oh, I definitely think it's worth considering, Countess. <laughs> She's doing the list. There, you see, Mr. Najir, the press takes me seriously. No, she's doing the lisp. Hmm. Of course, it is kind of far-fetched. Huh. Well, I never. Excuse me. Oh, did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. That was pretty funny. All right, so, yeah, secret sex, that's ridiculous. Who? Nothing like that could exist here. So, um, well, there's Ziggy. Can we ask him about Mr. Tut Smith? Tut Smith? That's gotta be an alias. Sounds like a fair on the lamb. Alright, not much. Now, what is the Countess doing talking with Ziggy? So that's the deal, Countess. I'd rather not talk about it right now. Yeah, no kidding. The wall's got ears around here. And so does certain nosy reporters, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I simply must speak to Dr. Carrington. 
sure thing, toots. What deal were they talking about? That's interesting. Something to keep in mind. And who are these two gentlemen? Well, whoever they are, we can't listen in on them. Anyone over here? Let's see what they have to say. Anything? Nothing? Okay, how about on the right? I actually had to cut that out because for some reason the uh, thing was getting glitchy and it wasn't letting me walk to the right. But I uh, made it work anyway. So we have Ziggy and Yvette. We haven't asked Yvette about Dr. Todd Smith. Let's see if we can. Oh, darn it. Oh, well, ain't you the hoity toity dame these days? <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you with your clothes on. <laughs> oh. Excusez-moi, am I knowing you, sir? Ziggy's my moniker. You're gonna pretend you doesn't know me? Ah, <laughs> uh, you are making the joke with me, no? Perhaps you have confused me with someone else? I ain't joking. You're a fat telecrow. <laughs> I, I know that body of yours anywhere. I am sure I am not knowing what you mean, Monsieur Ziggy. Oh, I get it. You is worried one of these high hats is gonna hear us, right? Oh, okay. I'm clued in. We can talk later. So Ziggy knows about her past. Alright, let's see if we can't, uh, walk in front. No, ah! Uh. Are you enjoying the culinary oh, well. delights this evening, Miss Delacroix? This food, it is adequate. I do not eat so much. This way I maintain my figure, no? Uh -huh. Ah, yes. Uh, and a lovely figure it is, Miss Delacroix. Merci, Dr. Carrington. You are so kind. I feel we've known each other long enough. Please call me Archibald. How long as have you known each other? Archibald, I am yours to command, as always. Miss Bow, is there something I can do for you? Oh, no. I was just admiring Miss Delacroix's dress. <laughs> Merci, Miss Bo. And your gown, it is a bit out of date, but charming nonetheless. Thank you, I think. <laughs> well, if you ladies will excuse me, I must mingle with the guests. All right. Let's see, can we talk to uh, Dr. O? Oh well, my gosh. well, look what the leprechaun's oh, dragged in. Hey, now watch what you just calls me, alrighty? It's like I don't know what that leprechaun to... thing is, but I don't like the sound of it. <laughs> I'm sure you've been called worse things, smart guy. Only by low-class type poisons, O'Reilly. By the way, ain't you afraid of being seen with me? Cops talk to stoolies all the time, and I was wondering what you're doing here. I'm a big patron of the arts. That's the kind of high-class guy I am. If you say so. You don't even know what the word patron means. <laughs> I does too. Okay, what does patron mean? Um, hey, ain't that the countess I see over there? I need to talk to her. Uh, let's see, how about... Alright, so there's no conversation going on here that we can use drops, so we can finally ask uh, him about Dr. Todd Smith, ask Mr. O'Reilly. There's an odd one. The man comes over from Egypt to get his precious dagger back, then someone steals it. Quite a coincidence, if you ask me. And he doesn't have much of an alibi. Interesting. And how about uh, you? You don't have much to say about anybody, but maybe you'll say something good about Dr. Todd Smith. What a tiresome fellow. I take quite a narrow view of fanaticism. Ah, uh, still just stating the obvious. Alright, whatever. Alright, now we can walk in front and ask Yvette about Dr. Tut Smith. Dr. Smith, he is very concerned about the dagger. He has been trying to get it back from Dr. Carter ever since he arrived. Do you think he could have stolen it? Perhaps it is possible. Then he could have stayed around so we would not be suspecting him, no? 
Hmm, that's what Dr. Nicholas was saying, too. I'm gonna walk around behind them. One thing I am admiring about the Egyptian man is the way he is treating his woman with the strong hand and the firm words. <laughs> well, that is the proper way, as our culture teacheth us. Which is not to say our culture is primitive by any means. Our civilization has evolved over thousands of years, so our methods are quite well thought out and practical. I bet. Mmm, and the Egyptian man. He is very skilled in the private matters as well, no? Well, speaking for myself, I feel it is my sacred duty to be knowledgeable in all matters that concern me. I've certainly had no complaints about my skills, Mrs. Jennifer. <laughs> ah, Miss Bo, I didn't see you standing there. Ahem. <clears throat> well, I hear another turkey leg calling my name at the buffet table. So if you'll excuse me. The turkey leg, it sounds good to me also. I'll accompany you, Dr. Smith. So she'll you pretty much just catch her flirting and making her moves on every single guy in this game. Actually, there's one guy she doesn't, but uh, you'll see why. Let's see, I don't think... No, I can't listen in on them. Anything over here? Let's see what these two ladies are talking about. Countess, they tell me you were married to the last museum president, no? Yes, darling, that's correct. Sterling Waldorf Carlton was such a charming man and so wealthy. My heart is just an empty void without him. Yes, in your wallet. Sterling was such a nice man. It's too bad that he's worm food now. Ew! <laughs> I prefer to think that Sterling is still with me in spirit. Oh, I'm sure his body is crawling with maggots by now. No, but if his spirit is... is with you, let me know because I'd love to see it. It is hard to lose a loved one, no? I understand you were only married this short time, Countess. Yes, I had only two short the charming months of married only life with months? Sterling before he died. Now and how long suspicious. had you known this man before you were married? Oh, we met just one charming month before we decided to get married. They knew each other for it three months love before he died. Sight. Where did you meet him? Oh, I had only been in this country a few weeks when I met Sterling on an offshore casino ship. It's quite legal to drink and gamble there, you know, and all the right people attend. Sterling was so charming, he just swept me off my feet. This Sterling, he must have had the large broom. Oh my gosh. It's just a matter of bet. speech, my dear. Sterling was a wealthy man. You must have inherited a nice fortune, Countess. The money doesn't matter, darling. Actually, there's an annoying problem with the estate right now. It seems Sterling was changing his will when he died to give me more money, perhaps. Anyway, I'm sure my attorney will take care of the problem. Oh. Too bad you can't dig him up to finish his new will. Yes, quite. That's strange. He was changing his will right at that time that he died. The archaeology, it is such a masculine profession. Breaking into the ancient tombs with your sledgehammer, thrusting your way into the treasure chambers, oh touching the gold artifacts, it is also <laughs> stimulating, no? Yes, well, when you put it that way, I guess it is rather stimulating being the most important archaeologist of all time. And it is such a burden to bear this greatness, no? With such pressure to perform, you must be perfect all the time. Yes, you have a unique understanding of my problems, Yvette. Are your problems, they are obvious, no? Very kind of you to say that, but there are many who misinterpret my actions. They don't understand the pressure of having famous relatives in the same line of work and having to compare oneself to them all the time. 
Ah, oh, but the Tutankhamun find, it is nothing when compared to your discovery, no? Correct. I didn't realize you knew so much about archaeology. I know many things, Dr. Carter. So I've heard. Maybe we should discuss archaeology sometime. I'd love to hear about the work you do, Dr. Carter. Perhaps later tonight? Will you be working late tonight? Oh, yes. I think everyone will be here tonight, no? There is much to be done to prepare for the opening of your exhibit tomorrow. I was planning a break for tea around 3 a.m. if you'd like to join me. It sounds wonderful. Perhaps you would uh, come by my office then? I'd be delighted. It is so gracious of you to take the time to speak with me. Nonsense. Think nothing of it. How will I ever repay you for this courtesy? I know how busy you are, Dr. Carter. Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something. And call me Pippin. Dang it, Pippin, weren't you just saying that you were able to resist her charms? I told you to stop bothering me, you camel driver. Dr. Carter, I will stop bothering you when the dagger is safely back in Cairo. I don't know if you've noticed, but the bloody dagger has been stolen from the bloody museum, you great twit. I see no reason to exchange epithets with you, Dr. Carter. I am aware of the burglary. I am also aware that no evidence was left behind, and the dagger case was not harmed. In fact, I think you removed the dagger from the exhibit. Me? Me? And what bloody reason would I have to steal my own bloody dagger from my own bloody exhibit? It's a good question. The dagger is not yours, Doctor. It belongs to the Egyptian people. As to why you stole it, I do not pretend to understand your twisted American thinking. Perhaps you wanted to keep the dagger for yourself, in your own private collection. Perhaps I should ask why you're shifting the blame onto me, you insignificant peasant. It would be very clever of you to steal the dagger, then stay about to start rumors about someone else stealing it. Only an archaeological thief would make such an accusation, Doctor. Now I'm sure that you stole it for yourself. I did not. Yes, you did. Did not? <laughs> this is going did. nowhere. Did not. Did. Gentlemen, please. Who asked you? Mind your own business, you nosy reporter. But I... I have more important things to do. Our discussion is far from over, Dr. Carter. That's what you think, you malodorous buffoon. So yeah, these conversations are very important, so like, pay attention to what they're saying. And you know what, I'm going to end it off here, because this is going long again. Yeah, this there's a lot to listen to, but we are almost done. And in fact, I can almost guarantee you that the next episode, things are going to turn up quite a bit. So, I'll see you then. Have a good day.